Well, we got the trailer back from the sandblaster. We had him sandblast and prime it. So the frame is now sandblasted and primed. And our next step now is going to be to remove these tires and wheels, clean up the wheel bearings, check all those internal components. I always prefer to do this after the sandblasting. That way you don't risk getting sand or anything in your new repacked wheel bearings or replaced wheel bearings. So the next step now is going to be to pull these wheels and go ahead and do the, do the repair needed on the bearings. Now with the wheels off, we're ready to get work on the hub. But a couple issues that come up, not actually uncommon. The trailers are the same as the Jeeps of the age. They have left hand and right hand threaded lug nuts. And it never seems to fail that somebody doesn't remember or know this and they put enough power on and like this, they snapped one of the studs right off. So we're gonna have to replace that stud once we get the hub off. Uh, one thing about left hand lug nuts, even though they should be on the left side of the vehicle, uh, the hubs are interchangeable and over all the years of repair, it's not unusual to find somebody put the left hand hub on the right hand side of the vehicle, either Jeep or a trailer. Another issue with the with the M38A1 and 38 and the trailer that goes with it, the M100 here, are that the drums are held on by three of these little flathead screws. After 50 years of rusting and being in that drum, they're usually quite difficult to get out. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and pull the hub assembly itself and we can do that on a workbench rather than trying to do it here on a trailer. So we'll pull the cap and pull the wheel bearings, take the entire hub over to the workbench, and there we can work on getting those screws loose. Another Jeep issue that also is found on the trailer are the wheel bearing lock nuts. Now, the lock nuts on the wheel bearing take a special wrench to loosen them. Not a problem, we have one here. However, it is not uncommon, in fact, it's almost a given that you're gonna find someone was in there before you and didn't have the proper tool. And so to get the nut on or off, they use a chisel and they chisel the edges of the nut, as you can sort of see here, if you look around the grease area a little bit. And that means we're gonna to have to use a chisel to get it off. Then we can grind those notches out and we can put it back in with the proper tool. So pretty much common thing to happen on either Jeep or trailer, you're gonna find it someone's been in there with a chisel putting those nuts on and taking them off. Yeah, here we got the hub off on a workbench and we're, and we're loosening those screws. Now another good reason for being able to do it from the backside by pulling the whole hub is you can see where it's heated around the, heated around the, hub, around the screw, actually heating the hub and not the brake drum. So there's the one over here that we haven't yet done. But when you heat around the actual hub where the threads are in, instead of having to heat through the brake drum, to get that, it's much easier to get the heat where you want it and get the screw loose a lot easier. So, so far we've got two of them loose. We're gonna heat up that third one, pull that out, separate the drum from the hub, pop out the rear seal and bearing, clean everything all up, get it put back together, ready to use. Okay, now we're addressing the um, broken all stud that we had in the hub. What we did was we just put, put the socket underneath the hub so it would support the area where the stud was and just drove the stud through the flange of the hub and down into the socket so it wouldn't bend the hub flange. And we'll do the exact opposite thing to put the new stud in. We'll put it in from the back, turn the hub around, hold it up over top of this socket and drive it down in and we'll have the replaced stud in there in no time. And on to the next item. Okay, we got all of our bearing and seal components cleaned up. We got our new seal laid out in order they go in from the rear to the front our new seal, we've got both bearings and bearing races. They need to be, re be packed yet for grease. We got the bearing, heavy bearing washer. We got the inner nut. We got the locking tab washer and the outer nut. Now the locking tab washer, as you can see, has been hammered flat. Those, one edge of that gets bent forward to lock the nuts in place once the two are in there. So it, it goes between the two nuts, same as on the Jeep. And again, we talked earlier about the fact that, that many people use a chisel to remove these and install them. Now that the nuts are cleaned up, you can quite easily see all the marks in them that 
indicated chisels been used on them. So um, in this case, they're still going to be usable nuts. We're going to uh, take that now and we'll grind it, to get those those uh, nuts to fit this tool. And when the nuts fit the tool again, then we'll be able to go ahead and reassemble everything. So at this point, why we're ready to ready to pack the bearings, clean the nuts up, and then we got a little bit of break work to do before we assemble all these hubs again. But that's the trailer bearings and wheel assembly on the axle, very similar to the Jeep itself. Okay, we now have all of our wheel hub bearings and parts ready to go back in, all cleaned up, bearings repacked. That's all ready to go back together. Our brake assembly here looks pretty good. The shoes look good, the springs are all look in good shape. Uh, the only problem we've got right now is that the cable that works them is got some frays in it way back here and it also is currently stuck. So next thing there we'll take that out see if we can't fix that up. If not we'll have to replace it. So we get the brake cable freed up or replaced and we should be ready to button these wheel hubs back up again. Now at this point we've installed the new brake cable. There's the new brake cable. We also installed a new spreader bar, new J-bolt, and new handle. So with all the all the new parts now on the brakes, we have functioning brakes. We have wheels ready to go on. We'll get uh, the wheels and bearings put on next and then we're ready for I believe a little bit of paint.